All right, so I figured the only way to make this video worthwhile is if I talk about The Dark Knight, like spoilers and all. So if you haven't seen The Dark Knight, the short version is go see The Dark Knight. For the rest of you, here you are. The Dark Knight. All right, so when Batman Begins left off, Jim Gordon gave Batman a card, he turned it over, it's a Joker card, so you're like, oh dude, the next one, Joker. And my friends and I were such freaks that we went up to the IMAX to see I Am Legend. Because if you saw the movie in IMAX, you got to see the first five minutes of The Dark Knight, which was the bank robbery scene. Long story short, the Joker's men are robbing a mob bank, and they all start getting picked off, and then surprise, the last one standing is the Joker. He has the mob's money and he leaves. And Jim Gordon and Batman are trying to take out the mob, and they see the Joker's picture, and they're like, oh, how much trouble can he really be? Let's concentrate on the mob. The important stuff. It's not like this clown's gonna cause any problems, you know? Now when Heath Ledger was cast as the Joker, at first I was like, I don't know what to think. Then we saw the teaser trailer and we heard the Joker. Starting tonight, people will die. I'm a man of my word. <laughs> And I was like, holy crap, I can't believe that's Heath Ledger. That, and he kind of sounds like Beetlejuice. I'm a man of my word. But in any case, I can't believe that voice still came out of Sir Ulrich von Lichtenstein. And when the first pictures of Heath Ledger as the Joker came out, people were like, he looks like the Joker, but it doesn't look like he feels like the Joker. And I can see what they're saying. It's the lighting of the pictures. He looks just like happy and fun. And then the trailer came out and we saw this. And right there, I was like, any and all doubts are now gone. If they just had that picture of the Joker as like the first official Joker picture, no one would have bitched. But on with the movie, after the bank robbery scene, the movie goes on, and I noticed you don't see the Joker for like 10 or 15 minutes. But if you really fall into the story of it, it's good. It's a really good story. Because Batman and Jim Gordon are trying to fix Gotham City, they have a new DA, Harvey Dent, he's just gung-ho also, he's like, yeah, let's clean this place up. So it's looking good for Gotham, it's like dragging itself out of the wreckage of its shitty damnation. Aaron Eckhart as Harvey Dent, he was great. The dude's a really good actor. I remember the first time I saw him was the core, and I was like, look at this generic dude. And now uh, he's really good Harvey Dent, and I suck. Oh, you have no idea. And people who bitch about the Dark Knight saying like, dude, what is this, like a cop show? Where are the supervillains? Well, honestly speaking, at this point, you don't clean up Gotham City by taking out the supervillains. You take out the mob, they run the show. And at a point in the movie, you realize even when the Joker's not on scene, you want to see the Joker again, but you're still interested in the story. You want to see the inner workings of how they're going to straighten this place out. And they had a recasting. Usually I hate recastings, I can't stand them. Katie Holmes played Rachel Dawes in Batman Begins, and now Maggie Gyllenhaal plays her in The Dark Knight. But personally, I prefer Maggie Gyllenhaal to Katie Holmes. Because Katie Holmes looked like she had to sleep with the DA to get her job, and Maggie Gyllenhaal, although she was sleeping with the DA, didn't look like she had to. She looked pretty good as a lawyer in this movie. Like, if you watch The Dark Knight and you try to envision Katie Holmes saying Maggie Gyllenhaal's lines, it doesn't work. So yes, Maggie Gyllenhaal all the way for Rachel Dawes. And then at a point, the mob throws her little ghetto-ass board meeting in the back of that kitchen, and they're one step ahead of the cops, Jim Gordon's all pissed off, Batman's frustrated, Harvey Dent's not liking it, I'm sure. But it doesn't matter, because this is the strongest intro to a character I think I've ever seen in a movie. And yeah, I'm talking about when the Joker crashes the meeting. Now, some people will argue that the Joker's intro was actually the bank robbery. I don't think so. That was the intro to the movie. That was the scene that kind of threw you for a loop. You're like, oh, look at that, it's the Joker. But after that, he just leaves. This is him going, you know what? Masks are off, full makeup, which almost doesn't make sense. But for the Joker, it does. I'm crashing this mob board meeting, and I'm gonna let them know that I mean business, and I am in control. So what are you proposing? It's simple kill the Batman. <laughs> And he does just that, starting with the magic trick. The moment he says, how about a magic trick? And he slams that pencil into the desk. And he was like, I'm gonna make this pencil disappear. <laughs> he takes Spawn's friend's head and he slams it into the pencil. And the greatest part is when I was watching it the other day, you hear the splat of the eye before you hear the thud of the table. Awesome. And of course me, like everyone else in the movie theater, I laughed really hard actually, which probably makes me a morbid bastard. The Joker is an unstoppable hurricane that just lands into Gotham at the worst possible moment for the good guys. So the best part's when the Joker has a knife in Spawn's mouth, and he's all like, Why so serious? And this is the part where he's like, you want to know how I got these scars? And he gives this whole story about how his dad was an abusive asshole and he gave him these scars. And I was like, all right, that's kind of a forced story as to how you got your scars, but whatever. Then later on, he's looking for Harvey Dent. Then he has Rachel Dawes by the face. And then he says, you want to know how I got these scars? And he goes on this bullshit story about how he used to have a wife and he put a razor in his mouth. And I was like, holy shit, awesome. It's all bullshit. That's great. I think Nolan really did his homework when coming up with the Joker for this movie. It's about his motivation. Because if you take the Jack Joker, what was his motivation for everything? At first, yeah, take control of the mob, and you can say, oh yeah, Joker did that in this one too. But then, he meets Vicky Vale, and he falls in love or some shit. Well, that's stupid. The only girl worth having in the Dark Knight, Joker dropped her out a window, and that didn't work. He blew her up. He ended up being a hurricane of death and destruction in Gotham for the same reason, pretty much, that a dog licks his balls. Just 
because he can. And that's the cool thing about this movie is because all of Batman's training revolves around the fact that people have a point for what they're doing. And Alfred even tells Bruce Wayne, he's like, eh, some people aren't looking for anything logical. Some people just want the world to burn. They don't care. The Joker, one of those people. He is not doing it for a girl. And another line in the trailer that really shows where the Joker's coming from is this. Come on, hit me. Because in the whole Joker versus Batman thing, the one way that the Joker can really win is if Batman kills him. Because he made him break his rule. I'm telling you, man, sick individual. However, if that's not gonna happen, he has his ace in the hole in this movie. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Harvey Dent. Now, Harvey Dent has locked away so much of the mob in this movie. Batman, Jim Gordon, Harvey Dent, they're a pretty good trifecta of awesome and good. Harvey Dent being the white knight, the best of all of them. So the Joker's like, hey, let's just turn him into a super criminal. That means I win. Now, Aaron Eckhart was really good as Harvey Dent, but you really see that when he has to just totally flip at 180. Now, the Joker professes he's not a man with a plan, that he just does things. But I'm sorry, you plan to get caught by the cops so you can get Mr. Lau out of the MCU. You plan to blow up a hospital, which I'm not gonna lie, that must have taken days of preparation, months even. Setting all those charges, seriously? And you planned to break Harvey Dent. You are a man with a plan, Joker. This city deserves a better class of criminal. And I'm gonna give it to him. No! So he burns and blows up half his face, and now we have Two-Face, which I really like the fact that they call him Two-Face like once in the movie. Because that would look a little weird that in the course of one day, everyone goes from being like, oh, Harvey to, oh, hey, Two-Face. So they just call him Harvey. They made his face look awesome, dude. This isn't like some Tommy Lee Jones makeup where he still has his lips. I mean, he's straight up like, no, no, you're not. Not yet. I mean, he looks bad. I mean, you see the tendon right there? It looks great. He's going through and he is wasting mobsters and anyone who had something to do with him and, you know, Rachel Dawes getting blown up, if the coin says he can. Which, that is one thing I find interesting. Harvey went from really good to really bad. He was about to smoke Jim Gordon's kid. Mobsters are one thing, corrupt cops are another, but... That's a kid. That's another level of just bad. So long story short, Batman saves Jim Gordon's kid, but you know, Harvey Dent dies. And people have speculated, well, maybe he's still alive. He's not. He's actually dead. I guess in the script, it says like he lays there with his neck broken. Christopher Nolan said, yeah, he's dead. So he's dead. But this movie ends where it's like, all right, if anyone finds out that Harvey Dent killed people, all the criminals they locked away are going to go back on the streets, which is really funny because I think half the mob is dead anyway. But in any case, Batman's like, I killed those people. That's what I can be. So it ends off, Batman is public enemy number one, and the cops are chasing him, and that's that. But there are a few loose ends in this movie. I mean, that Coleman Reese lawyer, he knows who Batman is. That corrupt cop, Ramirez, she knows that Harvey Dent was bad and, like, killed people. So I'm just saying, if I were Bane in The Dark Knight Rises, I would go after the lawyer. I'd be like, oh, you know who Batman is. I'm coming for you. Although Gordon said, well, you can't sweep it under the rug. Five dead, two of them cops. I have done the math a hundred times. Who are the five people Harvey killed, and who are the two cops? If you can let me know, let me know. And you can totally tell, if you've ever read The Long Halloween, Christopher Nolan took inspiration straight from that. So if you really look at it, when the Dark Knight concentrates on the legal aspects of everything and crime and the mob and all that, and people hate it and they say it looks like law and order, well, it's really pulled from established existing Batman lore. And it really works, and I really like the long Halloween. In the end, the Dark Knight nailed everything perfectly. My only regret is they don't show Two-Face that much. He gets created, he does some things, and then he dies. And that's that. I would have liked to have seen him carry on, but if Nolan's going for like a realistic world, you're not gonna live with that face without an infection killing you. The Dark Knight, I think, is the greatest superhero movie ever made. They did my favorite character ever justice. They did him perfectly. And the Dark Knight, of course, is awesome-tacular. So The Dark Knight, what did you think of it? Do you prefer the Heath Ledger Joker or the Jack Nicholson Joker? Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.